Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. I announced last week that we're we're not changing it. It's not a shift. It's just an evolution of this mastermind. It's still a mastermind where we try to have multiple people come in and talk about things about how to be a modern mortgage professional, but it's training. We also want to give you homework assignments. We want to push you and train you on how to be a modern mortgage professional. Uh, today, I have as a replacement of Todd Bookspan as my typical wingman. I've got my wingman and co host of today's call, Deborah Beard. <laughs> Deborah <laughs> Bird. What's up, Deborah? Hey, how are you? So it looks like I, I'm starting the drinking game off one, one drink down. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Well, so those of you, most of you know, because she's been on a number of calls lately, but she she is the twin sister of Denise Donahue. I'm going to start calling Denise Deborah and awesome. Deborah Denise. <laughs> uh, and she's also been her social media manager for years and also helping a lot of loan officers and realtors uh, with their social media marketing. So she's going to sit in that seat because that is one of the things that modern loan officers need to do is they need to crush it with social media. They need to get to the consumer first. That's modern. Uh, our special guest today is Kristen Messerly. And Kristen, I think it's been a long time since you've been on the Mortgage Coach channel. It has. It's good to be back. Yeah, it's good to have you. Uh, I, I'll give a little introduction, although she's been on this channel so many times. Her and I have written LinkedIn articles, which I think are some of the best LinkedIn articles I've written. I actually, in prep for the conversation today, Kristen, I went and read that one that we did. It's been almost two years ago. Uh, do you remember that article we did on the digital shift? Yes, that was my favorite one, I think. It's good. I think we called it. Like, if you read it, it could have been written today. You know, we would have, there would have been some nuances to it, but it's like we were dead on, I think, in terms of how we called the digital shift. And, you know, here we are in 2020 and it's just accelerated. But I thought, I think that article is still just as relevant today. Yeah, it was interesting. I was looking at that recently and it's, uh, yeah, it feels like, I can't believe it's been two years, first of all, but um, yeah, it feels like it could have been written right now. Yeah, so so when I've interviewed you in the past, it's always been as uh, you know, the, the founder and running cultural outreach, which you still do. Uh, you do social media coaching. I think you're, I don't know that anybody has been on the stage teaching lenders how to connect with millennials, how to market to millennials more than you. Uh, are you still doing a lot of that? Yeah, definitely. And especially this year, that has just become so critical to be using social media, not just as a, a way to push out content, but to really connect with people in an authentic way. So um, it's been interesting. We do at Cultural Outreach, we create a lot of financial literacy, mortgage related content that um, at, on a company level, they share with their loan officers to share. But um, individually, I've, I've spoken quite a bit uh, when talking about reaching millennials and next-gen consumers, um, just how to build that kind of authentic personal brand and, um, and how, how you're going to use social media as a way to connect with people versus just, you know, pushing out content. Yeah, another thing I think that's really unique about what you do is you'll, you'll actually interview millennials in cool settings, ask them smart questions, and you know, you're, you're interviewing them as a consumer. Do you, do you, I don't know, do you sell that content or do you license it? Is there a way people could check it out and either one, get inspiration from it or two, it's something you make available to marketers or people? I'm just curious. Well, we publish a bunch of our um, home buyer interviews on the cultural outreach YouTube channel. Um, but also we have a relationship with National MI where we publish content monthly. And usually there's some kind of home buyer interview in there. Um, but really recently, what I would recommend everyone check out is that we published a, we did a study of um, almost 1,500 home buyers from the ages of 22 to 37 and, um, and outlined a full report and there's a summary slide deck. So if you go to our website, culturaloutreach.com, you can download that. And I think it has some really interesting insights on just better understanding that, um, that consumer segment. Love it. Kristen is just a ninja. I mean, her research is the best. It's really well thought out. It's really well researched. And if you want to get to the consumer first, if you want to have great social media marketing, you need to read her report. You need to access the content. And then you need to try to leverage, you know, whether it's just take her ideas and put them in the market, uh, but, but leverage them. 
We'll put a link, if you watch this on our YouTube channel or comments, we'll put a link down below. So before we, I wanna ask you questions around that and Deborah, I wanna have you ask questions too. But before I do, I really wanna kick off and I wanna make sure I cover this because I said I would. Uh, I, I don't know what day it was, but the 14th, maybe that was like Wednesday. I, I had some photos, I don't know where I got them. They're, they're, by the way, they're years old, you know, at least two years old where I had these photos where uh, Zillow in their office had all these posters where they're just getting super clear on who their consumer is. And, and, and again, I thought these were super interesting and I'd like to talk about what's interesting about them first. And then there was some comments on, one person commented on, oh, what's interesting, they're, they're all white. And, and so first of all, for that comment, keep in mind, these are just a sample of three photos or four photos that I have. I really don't know. I'm sure that from a multicultural standpoint, Zillow has a lot of different personas. These are just happened to be the ones I had. But let's let's kick it off, Kristen. What what did you think? I know you looked at these. What do you think loan officers should take away from this? And then I'm going to bring you in, Deborah. Okay. So I um, I love the concept of this, and I, I was thinking we should be putting put something like this together, but. Um, where it's really giving you insight into um, to different types of consumers, like you know how someone is approaching the home buying process, what their fears are, what their um, you know what what are going to be the big takeaways for them, um, and but definitely, and this is across the board in the industry, it's really easy to to overlook or, or see that there's just a, a lack of diversity when it comes to looking at. Um, personas, for instance, or um, or how how just marketing in general, and so. But I think you know whenever we're looking at um, like social media or how or your marketing materials, it is really important to think who are these consumers representing, and do we have diversity here? Not just in terms of race, but also you know this is showing some diversity in age, and um, and I think just looking at how people are approaching the, the process differently. Um, and I think that is is just so critical because we're no longer, especially with the next gen consumer base where, I mean, 46% identify as ethnic minorities and that goes above 50% with Gen Z. Um, but just across the board, we have a lot of different types of consumers. And um, so I think doing going through this type of practice or finding resources like this is super important and necessary to, to really understand the consumer. Yeah, no, no doubt. And I, I, I'm going to add a two cents and Deborah, I'm going to get your feedback. We'll mastermind on it. If you're watching this conversation, you have a question for us, or you have a comment on like what you took away from this. You know, I shared them because I, I think if, if Zillow is doing it as lenders, we should know. I mean, they're the biggest real estate platform in America, not just for home search, but home entertainment. Uh, and they own a mortgage company now too. So I think it's important that we're like, hey, how is Zillow uh, profiling customers from a marketing standpoint? That's interesting. We should know that. Uh, and there's a lot we can learn. I'll pull down so what I, I would just call the, the checklist of takeaways. We'll wrap it up with this topic. Uh, but Deborah, what, what were your thoughts? Did you have any takeaways when you saw these? I did. I, I first thought um, from the consumer standpoint that is it was very clear um, how they segment, you know, what are their stressors? Are they married? Are they not? The thing that I had made a comment on is I wonder what the pattern would be of the influencers of these people or of the real estate agents who help these people. Is it, are we going to see a trend moving forward that we can get in front of them before the agent, before the financial advisor um, or the, the typical influencer of the people who refer out the lender? And what's the best way to do that? Um, so that's what I was curious on is, uh, who influences them and is it, is it social media? Is it getting, I, I feel like social media today is like the remote control of our lives. Um, sadly, in, in some ways, especially if you've seen social dilemma. Um, but have you seen anything like that, Kristen, of a, a shift of who's influencing those home buyers? Yeah, it's yeah. actually, that was a, um, section of our report that we did was just looking at influence and communication and. Um, I don't know that it's been a shift, but there has, uh, there are very few that relied on their parents for advice in going through the home buying process. 
And I think um, that tells you a lot in terms of how people feel very lost when it comes to um, financial advice and, and home buying information. Um, I think it was, yeah, over half of millennials said that they don't trust someone to um, turn to for financial advice. And um, one in five said that they are not confident in any step of the home buying process. So I think when it comes to influence, I mean, they originally, um, the, the home buyers that were in the process of buying a home said that they looked to the internet for their, you know, their research and, and finding out information. Um, those who just bought a home said that they turned to their real estate agent. So um, those are, I think, the big influencers there. But how do you get from the internet search to finding the real estate agent or the loan officer? And I think there's a, a really big gap in opportunity there. Yeah, no, no doubt. And let's, let's do this to close out the conversation. I'm going to go through and give a checklist of what I think a loan officer should take from these. And then let's go around the three of us. What should we take? And then let's transition to, I think mortgage professionals to your point, Deborah, they need to have a realtor and, and, and you need to do the same exercise with your realtors. And for you loan officers out there that are saying, you know what, I want to go beyond the realtor and I want to go to financial advisors. Well, you need to have a persona on what kind of financial advisors and referral partners you're going to go after. So, so first, I do want to thank Jojo who commented and challenged the, you know, the diversity. Clearly, these three photos didn't represent diversity. And I think every mortgage professional has to be intentional about that. Like diversity in our world doesn't happen by accident. We don't hope that it happens. It requires intentionality. You know, there was a time when I looked at 80% of the people that I interviewed were men. And I, my wife challenged me. I had a few women leaders, Cindy Ertman challenged me, women leaders saying, Dave, you know, it seems like all you do is interview men. I had to push myself. You know what? I need to create more diversity in the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel. And guys, we still need more diversity in the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel. And that's not going to happen by accident. That's going to happen through intentionality, awareness of creating diversity. So thank you, Jojo, for that. Uh, but why I shared them, I shared them because it's just so clear, one of the world's best marketers, they know who they're marketing to, important to know. And when it comes to the, the, the house, it's her. You'll notice that it, it was she. And I, I used to sell um, marketing to the real estate, or not to the real estate, to the retail industry. And when you talk to a retailer who's head of marketing, they don't talk about him, they talk about her. That's, you know, any C-suite executive in the retail industry, the consumer is her. And, and so there's intentionality. Now, that's not the case with referral partners, but clearly Zillow was intentional about that. Uh, I like that they had approaches and concerns and they had listed them out. Check. Do you have a persona? Are you clear on who they are? Do you know the right way to approach them? Do you know their concerns? And do you have it documented? Uh, checklist number two, how she makes decisions. Three bullet points. Check. You know, do you, do you, have you thought through how they make decisions? And then I love this. This is actually my favorite of all of it. Like, what's she thinking? You know, what's your customer thinking? And remember, it's not about your product. Like, we're in the mortgage business. So, like, here's our brain. And, like, the mortgage business is, like, half our brain. And maybe in today's market, it's been like 80% of our brain. Consumer mortgage is like a little pebble you know, of what they're thinking about. And the, and the home that they're buying is more. And if they're homeowner refinancing, it's still bigger than mortgage. And so, we, you know, we need, to, we need to be thoughtful about the people that we're targeting with our social media content. What are they thinking? And have you documented that? Have you thought about that? And does it expand beyond the product that you have? So those were a few things. That's why I shared it. Intentionality focus and going layers deeper. Any, anything to add to that, Kristen? Yeah, I um, when in thinking about women buyers in particular, um, I think that shows you how important it is to really understand the consumer, not just make assumptions. Um, because women home, single women make up the second largest cohort of home buyers, um, two to one over, over male home buyers. Um, and yet in our research, we found a huge gender gap and, and I found in other research that the same thing, and we actually surveyed two different times just to make sure. Um, but there, there's a huge gap when it comes to financial habits and, um, and just overall like feelings of, um, of confidence when it comes to home buying or any kind of investment. 
And so that tells you that women are, all the research shows taking on more and more of the financial decisions of households, but feeling really lost and um, having a lack of confidence and education around financial advice. So that's a huge opportunity for loan officers, but it's not something that you would necessarily know right away by the numbers of um, female home buyers that are out there. It's, it comes from really understanding the consumer. Cool, Deborah, your turn. Either comments on what I said or questions for Kristen. I, I love that because I was just about to ask. I've seen um, reports that have have shown how uh, the younger generation are delaying on even getting married and having kids, and how women are becoming head of household. So I was curious what the best approach was when you're trying. Like, what would be the next best step to do if you've identified this group as the second most dense? What would you recommend to loan officers as they're you know training for next year? How do you create a process um, to not only acquire, but attract that group? I mean, I think it comes right down to what we're gonna be talking about next, which is how you're building your brand on social media um, and the kind of content that you have available. Um, just in, again, looking at the research, there, there's just so much confusion around home buying and, and a lack of confidence. And so if you can put content out there that says, I'm someone you can trust, you don't have to, um, you know, and you're saying this by what you're putting out there, but you don't have to worry about um, asking a stupid question. I have this huge, and a lot of women do really like to do their research. So you should, everyone should have a YouTube channel that has uh, playlists of, you know, top questions that, that people ask and how you're responding to those or, you know, common um, mortgage terms, those types of things where you're talking through the process and, um, and explaining every stage of the process. And then you're putting that content out there. Um, but I think that tells, that tells me a lot as a consumer that I, I know I can talk to you about stuff and, um, and feel comfortable in that process. So I think first is really thinking about the kind of education and content you're putting out there. And then secondly, just like we were talking about with the, the Zillow content, just taking a look at your content and having actual consumers um, review that and see, you know, it, we don't realize, but a lot of the content out there is very masculine. And I'm not talking about making your, you know, pink washing all of your stuff. Um, that's not at all what, <laughs> what women want. But um, but having women take a look and see, like, is this something that I am attracted to? Am I thinking in terms of diversity, really, whenever you're um, creating and, and promoting content? Would you say that there's a platform that they tend to be heavier on, whether it's Instagram versus Facebook versus YouTube? Um, in terms of women or next gen? Consumers. I would say women yeah. in next gen, both. Yeah. yeah, well, in our research, it was consistent across men and women um, that, let's see, I've got that slide pulled up here. So um, Robert, yeah. by the way, Robert, if you could dig up that a link to Kristen's report so we could put it in both uh, Zoom uh, community and our Facebook community. So we'll get a link to Kristen's report for you guys. I also put, I had the, um, the slide deck pulled up that's the... Um, Summary. Feel free to share your desktop anytime. Oh, cool. Yeah, actually, I'll go ahead and share this right now. Um, so let's see. Um, so this, oh, we kind of talked through the gender gap, just huge, huge disparity when it comes to financial advice, and yet huge amount of the market. So that is big opportunity. Um, we did find consistency across the board with men and women in terms of the platforms that they're using. Facebook is still number one, no matter what age you are. I think Gen Z is, is tapering off of that, but Facebook is still where you need to be. Um, it was interesting to find that YouTube and Instagram were, at, were equal. They're very different platforms. Um, and, and I think they can you can create content for all of these that you're, you're positioning differently. Um, but then came Twitter. Pinterest is one that um, women tend to use a lot more than men. I think it's like 72% of Pinterest users, regular Pinterest users are women. So um, if you're really focusing on that segment, that's something that you can do, but only in the sense of something that you're promoting. Like if you create boards and are sharing those boards, um, that can be useful, but not in terms of like, someone's gonna find you on Pinterest, you know? So I think- now, Kristen, can I ask you, what about um, TikTok? I don't know if you saw the, the recent report of the single most downloaded app in 2020 was TikTok, um, largely probably because COVID too, people are at home and, you know, but do you see any trends around TikTok and, 
in with these numbers? I would love to know. Oh, no, I actually don't have any numbers on TikTok, but it, I mean, it's through the roof. Everyone is, I mean, everyone is on TikTok and wasting a ton of time on there. Um, but uh, so I think it's something I, I would love to know if anyone on the call or anyone that watches this um, is using it for business because I haven't seen it. Um, I think it would be a really tricky one, but um, I think mm -hmm. if you have content that you can create in really short, like people watch short videos and they're, they are scrolling through these things. So if you could position yourself as like, I'm going to create short financial advice or tips or whatever through that, I think that could be really cool. Um, I haven't seen it done well. Otherwise it's mostly a place that is you're finding comedy. And so mm -hmm. unless you're super funny, I <laughs> wouldn't recommend <laughs> trying that. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know. I, you know, cause I'm a marketer and my kids are wasting tons of time on, on it. I, I logged in, put the app in, and I felt like a, a creeper dad at a high school party. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I was like, I, I was like, I don't belong here. Like I literally <laughs> like, like literally deleted the app. Like, okay, I'll wait until yeah. there's more numbers on it, but this is not where, you know, Jack and Sid's dad should be spending their time. You know, I, as, as a dad, I'm just like, let the kids like this, like, I don't even want to know what they're doing. Uh, and it is really addictive. Like I was shocked by how I felt just, I, I just recently got on there also. And I was like, oh my gosh, you just keep going. Like you, you can get completely lost in it. So yeah, if we're trying to be productive here as mo modern mortgage professionals, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> well, let's say, Hey, Dave Savage, CEO mortgage coach, TikTok has not made the modern mortgage uh, <laughs> cut yet. Like that to me that I'm still thinking that's a, uh, busyness not business mm -hmm. uh but guys you know what facebook is business uh mm -hmm. if you don't have a brand on facebook that's business linkedin is business i am pushing the mortgage industry it's used heavily for recruiting i think it should also be used by loan officers i think particularly loan officers that want to be that captain of the wealth team you know you want to be respected by cpas financial planners local business owners you should get intentional about linkedin Clearly, uh, Instagram, I mean, I'm a, you know, I think I started using Instagram two weeks after it was founded and I love it, but you know, I'm a photographer nerd and I just love that stuff. I don't really use it for business. I use it more for personal. And, and you said something, Kristen, YouTube. I mean, I'm at the point where I, I think every modern mortgage professional needs to be intentional around a YouTube channel. Clearly Denise Donahue and, and Deborah, Together, you've built one of the the premier YouTube channels in the mortgage space. But what what do you what do you both think about that? Is that like okay, you want to be a modern mortgage professional at the highest level, you have to have a YouTube channel at some bare minimum levels. Thoughts on that, Deborah? I'll let you start. Yeah, that I would say that's one of the biggest challenges I have with the clients I work with is getting them comfortable on video. And you, if you listen to this channel, Tom Ferry, everyone has been pushing, you've got to do video. And so if I could just really encourage people, and I, I even had a conversation um, with Michelle Castle, I think it was last week, maybe in this week, if they had a GoPro just watching them all day, everyone is creating content all day long from those frequently asked questions from different dyna dan dynamics of the team, meeting and overcoming challenges of you know files that go to underwriting and something comes up. The younger generation wants to see the transparency they want. It doesn't have to be this mass produced, super professional with all the transitions. They want to feel like they are getting a behind the scenes look of what really happens and they appreciate that more than, than we know. And so if I could really encourage and stress people that for 2021, you have got to time block to do video and at least make it a goal to do it one video a week. In fact, I said one TCA, TCA Tuesday, um, and just talk about a success story from the week before. And it could be something that maybe was an error that you overcame or what happens when a appraisal comes in low. Um, or how to win a multiple offer situation when you're representing a buyer and just get the content on YouTube. That has got that one of the most, I would say number one things for getting out there on the market is video. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and especially after this last year where, I mean, everyone's connecting digitally and it's not easy to build trust with people and, and relationships with people when you're just talking on the phone. I mean, I'm sure most people, if not everyone, is having video meetings now regularly, but having that video, like people build trust by looking at you eye to eye and build relationship in that way. So if you have video content, you, you're just exponentially closer to building relationships with, with people. Um, and also like um, Deborah, I almost called you Denise. <laughs> um, <laughs> Deborah was saying, um, I, I think it's, it's really easy when you break it down to like, what am I talking about all day, every day? And um, creating those playlists that you can send people. It's not even just about the exposure you get from someone stumbling upon your um, YouTube channel. It's like sending people to the to the playlist that walks through the steps of, of home ownership and being able to you know use that in relationship with customers and prospects. So so guys, one takeaway for everybody: YouTube should be a channel uh, that's a priority to you, Deborah, <laughs> Denise. <laughs> Donahue, the mortgage nerd, has a great one. Uh, Dan Keller has a fantastic one. Kelly Zitlow has an amazing one. Walt Schultz, one of Deborah's clients, is currently building one. Is that something you're helping him with, Deborah? It is. I'll, I'll give him little hook ideas or what, what I love about Walt um, and even Tom in uh, Tom's another client in San Antonio. They'll, they'll send me little video snips. And it was funny with Tom recently. I was like, Tom, the only thing I see right now is your nostrils. <laughs> so we've, we've got to work on, you know, different angles. And that is something that we are uh, a service we're going to start providing come January is ways that clients can send us videos and we'll help them edit and do very minimal um, revisions so that they can post it and, and give a little bit more of a polished feel. But um, one thing that I recommend to clients to chunk it down is try to think of your before, during and after phases. If you can just segment the phases of what are some things that you would want um, your clients to know of how to prepare what educational content of before you make the decision to buy, whether it's credit, down payment, different strategies. And then when it's, okay, now I'm ready to make a decision, what content should they be seeing? And then even after, because I think one challenge is, you know, the, the whole mindset of, oh my gosh, this large commitment of a 30 year mortgage millennials, you know, that's scary. <laughs> they, they rent their clothes, some of them. So um, if they can just have a, a paradigm shift that it may just be a five-year strategy and here's how we use even a mortgage coach to help you with, let's look at this over five years or let's, let's look at this over seven years. Um, but I would say, I would recommend chunk it down to before, during, and after. Kristen, you're, Dude, you're on mute. Okay. I was just saying, I love that so much. Um, I think, and I can't tell you how many millennials I've interviewed that are, are home buyers that say they thought home ownership was five years down the line, but then they realized they could buy right away and that they wanted to buy right away. So I think for, um, if you do position things as I'm just going, I'm going to create a home ownership plan for everyone, no matter what stage you are in the process, that opens the door to a lot of buyers that are that don't know that they can be in the marketplace and they're going to be great referrals um referral sources for you as well mm -hmm. so yeah and I, is, I, go ahead you go ahead uh, the home affordability right now if they and sometimes it's hard to really understand um we we did a video showing when interest rates were at 18 percent. i think it was in the 1980s and just taking today's average loan amounts at 18 percent versus what they are today. The home affordability, if we could just scream that message out there that what you're paying in rent right now and how we can show you what it would take to buy and what wealth you're gonna accumulate much faster. Even if you're the kid that's going to college and you buy a duplex and you let your buddies rent out one side of it. I mean, there's, they can approach things differently if we can help inform them sooner but it's getting the messages out there consistently. And that is another key takeaway I've, I've really asked my clients to commit to is consistency is the name of the game. I mean, it's that whole compound effect. So how do we get that message out there and give the paradigm shift? Cause you know, they don't teach you this in school, um, but it's, it's a way, I mean, it, it helps put even my sister and I through college. <laughs> so um, anyways, I just wanted to share that. I love it. So I want to show, because I, I love what you said, using Mortgage Coach. Uh, this is the Mortgage Coach channel. 
reminding guys like this is this is branding you know very intentional about the photo she's using position yourself as the mortgage nerd and 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 she's creating not only personalized content with families so a specific family hey here's what it looks like to rent and then buy a home at different purchase prices so the family can can look at owning over different periods of time but then showing them different periods of time you know short and maybe it's maybe it's 3 years it's not just monthly they're going to make up their own story maybe it's 60 months but showing over different windows of time and then it's one of the things this this was one of what i thought was the most important sessions in the modern mortgage summit was denise's session where she said hey you know i am giving advice i'm making it visual i'm making it personal i'm making it local so she's a, a local personal mortgage professional, but I'm also creating scroll stopping social media that that I can do. And then one of the things I love what Denise does is she'll she'll make a TCA and then she'll just go on Facebook Live and she'll be talking. And next thing you know, she puts the camera on the numbers. You know, so it's it's it doesn't have to all be polished, but I, I just I, I do think modern mortgage professionals, they need to be advisors and then they need to be able to take that advice in the stories around that advice and create so, st scroll stopping social media. What are your, what are your thoughts on that, Chris? And I know, I know Deborah's thoughts cause I've interviewed her on it and she's obviously the one executing for and helping Denise execute. But what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think so many people honestly just don't know that comparison and it's so funny. I don't even know if I told you this, Dave, but I, I had owned a home in Oklahoma, of, of course, and that, that makes total sense. Like I, I could own that on a social worker salary and it's very easy, cheaper than renting. But in LA where I am now, it, I thought it was, it made more sense for me to rent until I was playing around with the TCAs um, not that long ago. And I realized like, no, I, I need to buy. Because <laughs> if you look at it over a you know, period of time, it, it's just amazing what you can um, see whenever you, the numbers are really clear to you. And so being able to share that on social media and talking through comparisons, that that's exactly what people want to know and what they want to better understand. And I definitely think being authentic about it is the key. Like you don't want to come across like you're a super salesy person. You want to come across like you're an advisor and you're sharing education. So I, I am a big fan of educational content and um, being authentic through it. Well, I think Deborah, why it's worked for Denise for Denise is because, you know, anyone can say, in fact, I, I interviewed a loan officer and here's just the reality for those who are on the call. There are still some loan officers out there who this gentleman literally told me, I, I just tell the client if they start asking me about rate that, you know, FHAs typically always have higher rates. And if they ask me about conventional, I just flip the script and say, oh, don't worry. Conventional rates are always typically higher. So it's um, their word hasn't always been truthful. And so that's the main difference is when Denise uses a mortgage coach, the numbers shown over time don't lie. And that's what builds the trust for her audience. And that's why people almost fall in love with her is because it is very authentic, but it's transparent because she showcases the truth through a very easy model, like a mortgage coach, and then through visuals, because not everybody maybe can resonate with you know, the chart. So some may, they need a little bit of both. It's that multi channel and platform of how you display the information. So you're communicating most effectively with the person on the other side. But I will say, you've got to commit to showing the numbers, because there are still people out there today who um, may be manipulating a little bit just to close a deal. And that's not the type of clients that I know are on this call or advisors especially those who are using Mortgage Coach, but that's why I want to empower Mortgage Coach users so much of using the tool and maximizing it, not just for that one meeting, but to echo it out on the platform so that you're getting the, the truth out there, out there and people can make better decisions, even if they don't know you. If they knew how to make better decisions, we could really change the world in a greater way of accumulating wealth much faster. Love this. So I want to, I want to create a little two-minute playbook for you guys. This mortgage coach, you need to think of it as a way to give advice to a client, but you need to think of it as the seed to a marketing story so that you're, you're helping a client personalize local advice. I love what you said, Kristen, like, hey, when I lived in Oklahoma, I thought one thing, but now I'm in LA and I thought another thing. 
but what I thought wasn't right. So guys, every market, everybody's listening to this. I think you, particularly if you're near big cities, there's a lot of people that don't really understand their opportunity in their cities. But think of this as the advice platform. And then as I, as I go into our Facebook group, uh, this morning I was reading Rob Christman's report. And, and he opened up his first article or his first, you know, Rob Chris, when he starts off at the top and he started with this report from Zillow that talked about the, the average, um, I guess it was millennial is spending um, 202,000 on rent before they buy. And that's up almost 50,000 according to this report. So I, first of all, I thought like, oh my God, that's a jaw dropping amount of money. And we need to put that in mortgage coach. But then I went in and I clicked through to the Zillow article. And guys, that 200,000 was just the tip of the iceberg. Like when you scroll down this and it goes from city to city, you know, in Florida, Miami, it's 500,000. You know, let's go a couple cities down. Uh, New York, it's 320,000. You know, when you get to the bottom of, of this article, it's, it's like 560,000. I think this was in uh, yeah, San Jose. So, so every, it made me realize, you know what? Every city, it's different. And so, so I would push everybody on this call right now, find out what it is in your city. First of all, that's newsworthy content. Like people in your city don't know it. Realtors don't know it. That's, a, that's ammunition that you should go find in the city I live in where you wanna be the digital mayor of your city, you should know what are people spending on rent before they buy. You should educate your realtors on that. You should put that in a mortgage coach report. Uh, just good content, customized, personalized, localized. What do, you, what do you both think of that? Yeah, I think that's super important. Also, I would say that, that um, I think you have to share that content regularly. Like it, it can't just be a one-off thing. That has to be who you are. And, um, and I, I think one thing that's interesting is that we, I, I mean, I focus on financial education. That's been a huge part of my career. And yet whatever we grow up believing or, or our experiences around finances, that really stays ingrained in us. And that's why a lot of times I, I catch myself saying or thinking things that are just are not good financial habits. And so we need to see that type of thing really regularly, especially to be able to stay connected with someone on social media or continue to remind ourselves, oh yeah, I, maybe I'm not ready right now, but I have a friend who is and I want to connect them. So, um, but yeah, I think that's great content. Deborah, thoughts said. on that piece of content? Well, I, I love what Kristen just said and, and to piggyback on that to help people put this in application, I would make it a, a channel or a campaign but maybe every Monday is your rent to own campaign where you're gonna consistently dedicate every Monday, you know, you're gonna spread truth or content that's just rent to own. And then maybe Wednesdays, your move up buyer. And so that way you have a plan that's consistent and you know, you can focus, okay, today's Monday. So what TCA am I gonna show that's a rent to own example? Maybe I'm gonna interview. And maybe that needs to be part of the process is if someone chooses to be a part of this survey, at the very end, you have your uh, client relations person, or maybe that's you, take a client that you just helped, very similar to you, Kristen, who thought they couldn't buy because they were renting and just interview them. And that would create a ton of content of, you know, what were you thinking? What, what was the common thread of why you thought you couldn't buy? Now that you have bought, what are you most excited about and then maybe you interview them a year later okay we interviewed you here this is what you were most excited about did you host your first thanksgiving did you do your first christmas did you buy your first christmas tree whatever it is um another thing i would add to that as a prospecting um part of the wheel is there are a lot of apartments right now that are at max capacity and if you speak to those leasing agents the ones that are at max capacity are usually willing to do a home buying class where you could come in, bring a TCA, invite an agent if you wanted to. And the reason why you target the ones at max capacity is they wanna get those renters out so they can get new renters in and charge the higher you know, rents. Um, so also look at it from- And get the leasing agent commission. Yes, so it, <laughs> you know, maybe spend one day where you're, you're gonna target and just find out where the capacities are of different apartment complexes and how you can convert them to doing a class, which 
Dan Keller is even willing to share his his whole curriculum of how he, he teaches those classes. But um, even with COVID, you can still do this via Zoom and have those quality conversations, which if you're using your Win by Noon planner and tracking your quality conversations, I would put that on there as, you know, are you targeting those leasing agents? Here's how you can add value back to them. So, so Jane Stone just said, thanks, Tim, uh, for that idea. You're the best. Uh, Jane also asked, how can we attract Gen Z and local millennials? We'll get to that. Uh, Frank said, with, with TikTok, it would be a great way to direct to the, to the young market. Anyways, I'm not going to read all this because you wrote it well, but I don't read well out loud. Uh, I, here's what I want, Frank, and anyone else listen to this. I would love some examples of TikTok making money. And I'm not saying it can't. I just, I always found like, even when Facebook first became a thing, there were a lot of loan officers busy on Facebook. But when I would interview top producers, the Jeremy Forciers, to even Dan Keller in the early days, I couldn't find them. Like, that's a major lead source for me. I'm, I'm making money. I'm doing business. And, and so TikTok is still in that bucket for me. As a mortgage professional, I do think as a realtor, and, and by the way, I do think it's going to get there. Like, I'm not saying TikTok's not going to get there. It will get there. We will figure it out. More demographics will get into TikTok. And it is just a question of time until it becomes business. I just don't know that it is right now. Uh, so thank you for that, Frank. Keep the questions coming. So in three minutes, I want to transition to just training. You know, one of the things I want to do on these calls is give homework assignments, do training. So Deborah and Kristen, be ready for that. Kristen, before we transition to that, is there anything else you want to make sure, you know, you knew you were coming into the Mortgage Coach channel. Anything you want to make sure that you share before we transition? Um, I'm kind of excited to transition. So I've, I've got a little exercise that we can run through. Um, but otherwise, I think we've, we've covered everything that from, you know, making sure that you are active on video and, um, and thinking through where you're posting that video, those videos, um, YouTube and Instagram, Facebook, and then also, um, yeah, just knowing your consumer. So I do recommend everyone check out the report that we just released and, um, and just stay in tune with uh, the actual voice of the consumer. And she did share a link to her slides. So wherever, whatever channel you're watching this in, those slides look pretty cool. I'm gonna go through them. Now, that, that, is that the report, the slides? No, or, that's just or, a summary because the report is really long and I realize that not everyone wants to go through it in depth, though we do include a lot of images and lots of, you know, it's pretty designed pretty well, I must say. But, um, but yeah, you can, that one's a lot longer. So if you are interested in diving in a little bit more, definitely check out the report, which is on our homepage at culturaloutreach.com. Cultural, culturaloutreach.com, log in, get the full report. And she was cool to give us the book summary. I will get both. I will summarize both. Deborah, before we transition to exercises and training, anything else you want to make sure we share? No, just execution, which I think we're about to, to get into a little bit deeper. <laughs> cool. So guys, I'm going to keep an eye on chat. We'll close out with any questions that you have. And if you did ask a question and you don't feel like we answered it well enough, uh, feel free to re-push me on it. I'm happy to do that. Uh, so Kristen, you said you had an exercise you were kind of excited about. Tell us about it. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, walk people through like a really practical um, exercise for getting started. Curious on Deborah, I, I feel like you could add a lot as we go through this, but um, let me share my screen here. So this is what I've walked through with people um, in the past, just trying to kind of curate some content or think through your own content. Um, and the first step that I always recommend is just knowing who you are and you can just list out a few things that are areas of interest for you um, or things that kind of characterize you. So for me, it's you're gonna see a lot of pictures of my dog on social media because I love my dog. So if you're a parent or a pet parent or, um, or you love coffee and Dave's always posting stuff about coffee, <laughs> Or, um, I, or I used to post coffee shops. I know. Yeah. I, I think I even I even promoted this call because last time Kristen was in Portland, we were having coffee, and but it's it's been a long time since I've been able to post a coffee shop photo. <laughs> I hopefully in twenty twenty one. Well, I used to post a lot about travel, and so <laughs> things got a little weird. Right? But yeah, or maybe anything home related, home design, um, of course 
I think financial education has to be part of all of this, but thinking about your personal brand and how to be authentic to who you are, you do not want to be sharing stuff that isn't authentic to you. So, um, so I think it's just really easy to think through those, those characteristics and then, you know, how you can post about it in an authentic way just on your stories or, um, having those, those coming out regularly. Um, and then if you write down, I would recommend everyone walk through this exercise beyond this moment, but write down five questions that people often ask of you or five how to's that you could walk through really easily. So this is back to Deborah's point about like you're creating content all day long. Um, so just take a minute and, and, and write down a few of those, those topics. So, you know, rent versus own or, um, or asking questions about what would even what documents they need going through the process. Um, and then choose one of those, or ideally you're going to choose all of them to walk through and create just four to five bullet points of, um, what, what you would describe for that. So you've got the question and then you write down, here's my response points. And then from there you can create post content. You can even just share a photo of something related on Instagram. That's, you know, that you, and then you're in post copy, uh, writing out those bullet points. So that is great advice and it's not hard. You're not even having a graphic designer create the infographic or anything like that. Um, but taking each piece of content and creating other pieces of content. So you've got that one topic and you've got the bullet points. Now you can create a video and maybe even clips from that video that are for each of those bullet points. Um, you can also write a blog post from that if you're a writer. Uh, but there's just so much content you can create from just that a few minutes of strategizing on um, the questions people ask. And then again, really easy day-to-day -day content on who you are or things that you enjoy so that people connect with you on a relational level as well. Deborah, is there anything you would add to this kind of exercise as people walk through that? Uh, not other than imagine what they're feeling like getting to their pain points and getting inside their their headspace of um what are their fears what are their wants what's the real motive behind the decision uh and that way you're you're bringing in the emotional aspect into your your social media and actually to that point, in that slide deck that i shared before um we and i don't know if it'll show me switching slide decks but we've got um some stuff in here on what people are least confident about and what topics to that people are most interested in. So in each of these, we've got barriers that you could create content from that. Like, you know, looks like savings is an issue or and maybe you wanna talk about investing or down payment. You can speak to that consumer by just understanding them a little bit better. Love, love that. Love that. that was a sweet assignment, guys. Uh, if you went through that assignment, you scheduled some time, you documented that, you're a modern mortgage professional. You're, you're building those skills. Remember guys, we, in the, the Modern Mortgage Summit, it's, it's now available for 365 days. Uh, it's gonna make a great Christmas gift for loan officers. So if you're a manager, uh, you, can, you can buy it for your loan officers. Uh, Shayla Gifford, who was one of the, the keynote speakers and she created a couple of how-to videos. She, she made a little two minute video that I put in our Facebook group today. Be sure to check out that two minute video. I think the two minute video of Shayla by itself was pretty inspirational. Uh, did either one of you guys see that yet? The promotional video or the, her training in, inside of it? The either one. one i mean oh did you... well the 20 minute one i am obsessed with i'm so so i just yeah i love it she talks about you know harnessing your dysfunctions and um it's very inspirational to me I, I think um and really practical yeah no her her harnessing your dysfunction i mean that was one of my biggest takeaways now again i have some pretty bright <laughs> dysfunctions but i've i've harnessed them uh, Deborah knows one of them, you know, my ADD and dyslexia, you know, in pronouncing people's names properly is, you know, a lifetime curse, but I've, I've managed to create a lot of sense of humor and a lot of laughs around it. Uh, my family laughs at me daily because of all the, the things that I say. Uh, so I love that video. Totally agree. Uh, so guys check out that, uh, two minute promotional video. And if you do not have a one year pass to the modern mortgage summit, 
you're missing it. It's It's got over 60 videos. So literally you could watch a single video every week. Every week you could train on being a modern mortgage professional with that summit. So little plug for Todd Bookspan, Win by Noon and the Modern Mortgage Summit. Todd, I, I hope you noticed if you watch this back, Deborah gave Win by Noon a plug. Um, <laughs> Deborah, do you use Win by Noon? Are you a Win by Nooner? I do. In fact, I have my original. Let me grab it because I, I keep it here from when I originated back in 2018. In fact, I show this and of course it's the Mortgage Coach Edition. But, um, you know, I, I like it because even though I'm a millennial, um, there's something about crystallizing when you write things down and you have a plan, but you go back and you reflect. So I, I went and I, I shared a screenshot of this, of what my goals were, my business goals, my personal goals, my vision, my purpose back from 2018, from when wow. I first heard about one by name. So yes, I actually ordered a whole bunch. Um, Denise actually just made a post where she did a, a segment with real estate agents. She did a big mastermind talking about business planning and she had mortgage coach, Todd Duncan, um, win by news. Oh, I saw that. I saw that. And so she's now using this with her agents where they, they will now bring this to every monthly meeting because there's a real estate agent edition if people didn't know that. So that's also a great gift. And that's their accountability where they just bring it to their mastermind meeting and they all open it up and they look at their, their tracking and, um, yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Cool. So, so guys, there we'll have a link to Win by Noon here. Uh, Charlie Jackson just said, "Love Win by Noon." Just started recently. I need to stay focused. Uh, Charlie, we all need to stay focused. Uh, so, Roger that. Uh, also, we put a link to the Modern Mortgage Summit. Guys, sign up for yourself. Great Christmas gift. Uh, buy it soon. You know get a tax write-off. I think everybody's made a lot of money in the mortgage business. So great time to get gifts, make, make that one of them, make one by noon, one of them. So we are in the last eight minutes. If you have questions or comments, let us know. Jason Meyer, uh, TikTok, you know, we really lit a flame by talking about is TikTok a thing. And he put a link in chat. I clicked on that link and 170 172 million views of hashtag mortgage. So clearly mortgage is a topic in TikTok. Uh, and, and as I hear from top producing loan officers, I, I qualify by the way, top producing loan officer, someone that does over a hundred loans a year. So, you know, people that are like, I believe you can get loans from any social media platform, but you know, do you have a sustainable mortgage practice of a hundred loans a year? Top one percenters in today's, in 2020, are doing over 350 loans for in 2020. So if you're a top one percenter in the mortgage industry, you closed over 300 loans this year. Uh, so I'm looking for success stories. You're closing over hundred loans. Now, if you're a brand new loan officer, you're a millennial, you're just getting started and you're killing it. To me, killing it is, you know, you're, maybe you first had your, your first month of 10 loans, uh, and you're on track to close over 50 loans a year and you're using TikTok, I want to know about it. I consider that a best practice. Uh, but just because you got a loan out of TikTok doesn't mean it works because uh, it's all about creating this sustainable, modern mortgage experience where you're closing 100 plus loans a year. That's, that's the way I define and look at modern mortgage experience. So Kristen, you are the, the guest of the day. Well, Deborah and I are the, the two co-hosts. Any final thoughts you have before we go into wrap up mode? We have about six minutes left. Um, I don't think so other than just encouraging everyone to re remain productive on social media. I think especially through this year, it's really easy to get caught in the scroll. Um, I think Dave, you called it like scroll of doom or something. I don't know, <laughs> but it's, it's easy to get really stuck there. And um, I think, you know, taking the time aside to uh, even write down your plan for social media is super crucial to making sure that you're productive and using it as a tool for uh, business and branding, uh, but not not using it as a way to escape, you know, life and business. So well, I think let's, be let's, are, yeah. let's spend five minutes on that because I came away from Social Dilemma uh, watching that movie. By the way, the interview 
of the, the guy who did it with Joe Rogan is actually better than Social Dilemma. And I'm not taking any away from, away from Social Dilemma because it was an awesome movie that I think every, like I wish I would have had access to that content when my kids were younger. I would have, I would have helped train them to, to manage their attention more. And I, I do think it's, it's so up to us, like one of the skills of the modern loan officer is to put our attention on the right things. When by noon, uh, and when by noon isn't scrolling through social media, when by noon is getting your prospecting in, when by noon is using a TCA with every family, winning by noon is creating scroll stopping social media that gets the attention of consumers and realtors. And so I think it's a really good point. I would love to just go rapid fire with all three of us. What are we doing to not get sucked into the vortex of social media and waste time? I, I, I'll just say what I do, I, I measure it. I mean, I, I've subscribed to Rescue Time for a long time where it tracks everything I do on my desktop. It also tracks everything on my mobile phone. And I, I look at it, I mean, I, I keep score. And if I'm sucking up time on Facebook, I mean, it's there like, oh, wow. Look at how much time I spent on Facebook. And I know how much of it was business versus busyness. Uh, so to me, my personal hack to not be out of control, you know, sucking away my life is just measuring it, monitoring it and looking at it daily. Uh, Kristen, since you started that conversation, what are you doing to get out of the, to be functional and be productive? Yeah, I think, I mean, I personally go through waves of this, but I think, um, I really focus on where I'm getting the business. And so it, you know, it often is not, it actually, it's never come from Instagram specifically, though people follow me and, um, and it's a fun relationship building type thing. If I'm really focused or have a lot of business, I, that's not going to be my top priority. LinkedIn is where I get my, get some business. And so I post strategically there. I check in on it daily and respond to comments and other people's posts but I keep my time pretty limited, honestly. I think it's more important for people that are direct to consumer. So as loan officers, mortgage professionals, you really need to be active on there, but um, but time, yeah, put a time limit on it and, and really focus on um, what, what is my business goal for being here. Deborah. I, I love that. And um, I'm just gonna say on in my planner, this is something that that is something you can track on how much time that you're actually spending on social. And so two things I wanna to say to that is, if, if you're in the time block or the zone of it's, it's for entertainment, that's one thing. Um, but I think as professionals, you absolutely need a time block within your day that whether it's the first 20 minutes, you are connecting, liking, commenting on your sphere of people that you are either prospecting or um, who have done business with you where you're engaging. You have got to be an active participant. Um, and again, I would time block that as one of the first things that I do in the morning. And then also, um, you know, you've got to create content that is worthy for people to consume and interact with. So there, the, if we're keeping this business related, let's, let's make a commitment to put good content that people are consuming so they can make better decisions. And, and that way, if people get into that social trap, you know, maybe they can stay on your page and they can, uh, you know, get sucked into just learning about the, the pregame, which is the before you buy and they're consuming it. And they know to go to your channel because you're putting valuable, transparent, authentic, you're highlighting your dysfunction. So if you're dyslexic, like people end up falling in love with the dysfunctions. And so make content that, Will, will captivate attention. And then two, you have got to interact and comment and like, and you know, support your business partners. It's no longer enough to just hit the like button. You've got to start commenting and sharing. So if you're not following the win by noon page or the mortgage coach page or other real estate agents, you, you need to, and you need to help keep their content alive and, and build that tribe where your own partners are doing the same thing for you. So maybe it's title companies or insurance agents start having that as part of your conversations in 2021 of how you support each other, which is creating better content for people to consume, as well as being an active participant in building the relationship. Love it. So we are time to wrap up. I'm gonna give my last personal hack. All my social media apps, you know how you have your home screen? All my social media apps are in a folder that's titled entertainment. So that 
you know, while there are times where I log into those to create and to post, it's entertainment. And just, you know, make sure that you're, you're really clear on when are you entertaining yourself, keeping yourself busy, making yourself happy, laughing, coping, consuming news, category. It's entertainment. And when are you doing business? You know, when am I doing business? So think about categorizing those things, measure what matters. Uh, hopefully this hour together got you one step closer to being a modern mortgage professional. Every Friday at nine o'clock, we're going to mastermind and we're going to give you exercises. We're going to train so you can become the modern mortgage professional. We, we have rebranded our Wednesday training at Mortgage Coach. We are on dog food. Like we train every day of the week. So someone is training at Mortgage Coach every day of the week. I do the training on Tuesdays where I interview someone awesome. And I also, when I'm available, do the Friday. But one of our uh, success managers leads our Wednesday training. And it's now called Mortgage Coach Black Belt Training. So if you want to be a black belt at Mortgage Advice, which is one of the pillars of being a modern mortgage professional, every Wednesday, 11 o'clock, we'll train you to be a black belt. So guys, first of all, Kristen and uh, Deborah, thank you so much for spending an hour with us today. Uh, everybody who gave us your attention, we appreciate it. Give us a like if you got value from this, share it with your mortgage friends and uh, have an awesome weekend. This, this call is a wrap. Take care, you guys. Thank you. Bye.